Yo, what's up guys? This is Jackson Pearson. If you guys are familiar with the channel, you guys know I play an MLW Wiffle Ball and I also do pranks and vlogs. And if you guys are new, I play in a professional Wiffle Ball league called MLW Wiffle Ball. It's expanding every single day and has 380,000 subscribers on YouTube. A couple days ago, they dropped their preseason power rankings. It's made a ton of noise throughout the community of MLW. A lot of people agree with it. A lot of people disagree with it. So today I'm going to be giving you guys my personal opinion as a player on what the rankings should be going into 2023. Let's get right to it. Let's go. To finish last in my personal power rankings, I would have the Great Lakes Gators. Do I think this is a bad team by any means? No, I do not. And I'm also very excited to see Jason Chadwick in a Gators uniform for a full season. But you guys got to keep in mind that the only wins that they got last year was when Chris Cheatham was on the mound. And I don't know if Chadwick is going to be able to sustain his pitching ability that he had, but I do think he's going to help him on the offensive end. Just think compared to most teams, their lineup is not as good. Don't really have a great number two arm, although I think Jason can get it done if he just continues to put in work. I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do with Reese Harris, and I also think that it's going to be key for Jason Chadwick and Zerlike to be way more consistent this year if they want to be successful and be actually good. Personally though, I just do not see him getting more than a couple wins just based off them not having a dominant number two arm and just not having a great lineup to back it up if they do end up getting runs in the field. Therefore, I'm going to put them last, but I hope the Gators do prove me wrong. In seventh place, I'm going to go with the Metro Magic. Many people may disagree with me on this one because they have the additions of RJ Walgate and Grant Miller, who are exceptional players. RJ Walgate actually took me deep at UF's United Wiffle Ball back in this past October, and he is a great player. Do not get me wrong by any means. He's also a very dedicated kid as he's shown up to many MLW tournaments and has been successful and interacted with everyone well. I do think he is going to be a great player in the future. I also say the same for Grant is I think Grant is going to adjust to MLW competition very quickly and very smoothly, especially at the plate. He's already used to the yellow bat and great pitching as he's played in Ma, U Whiffs, and traveled all over for Wiffle Ball as he is one of the best players in the country. The reason why I do end up having them at 7th though is just because it is a mandatory four-man lineup in MLW this year. So although Grant is amazing, I am not sure how much RJ Walgate is going to be able to get to the field and how much of a difference RJ can make right away. Do I think RJ is a great player? Yes, I do. And I think he will be very good. I also do think it's going to take him a couple years to get up to the point where many people see him maybe right away. I think it's going to take RJ maybe two to three years to reach his peak where he can be as he's only 14. So with the four-man lineup, I think Grant is going to be pitched very carefully to in big games especially, and it's going to leave up those three other guys to actually do damage, and I do not think the Metro Magic can do that. Of number two pitching and depth just to be good and compete with all the other top teams. Moving on to six, this one is going to surprise a lot of people, but I'm going to put the Coastal Cobras, and I already know a bunch of fans that are watching this are going to be like, oh, but they just made the World Series, they just made the World Series, and I'm going to tell you guys why I put them in six. I think Brendan Baranowski is going to be good, but I don't think he's going to be able to repeat his historic season last year. Let me say it one more time, I think Baron is a great player, a great pitcher, and I think he's going to hit very well this year as he is hitting in that Cobras lineup now. 100% sure Drew already came out and said it's going to be extremely hard for him to repeat what he already did last year. Therefore, I think they're going to have a couple more runs scored against them. This and year. I just think their team in general is a little inconsistent, especially as we saw in the World Series. They went out and beat a great Preds team in the playoffs last year, and then they struggled extremely in the World Series. And the main part of that was just their offense, because they have a bunch of guys that are good, but they're a little inconsistent. They will get some big hits here and there, but I feel like their offense can never fully put it together. I don't know if they have a defined leader on that team now. I do think Barron can be a leader, but I think he's more of a quiet guy, not a rah-rah type player. So it's going to be interesting for me to see where they end up this season. Moving into the fifth spot, I have the downtown Diamondbacks. No, this one's going to surprise a lot of people too because they just won the World Series. But you guys got to listen to me on this one. Jimmy Norb is one of my best friends in the league and just one of the best players in general, if not the best, as he's literally the back-to-back -back champion. But like I said previously, it's a four-man lineup this year, and I just think it's going to be very interesting to see how the Diamondbacks complement Jimmy Norb. I think their offense is going to be able to fully get it done when they're pitching around Jimmy. I really do not. Do I think Jonah can do it? I absolutely think Jonah can do it as we saw him hit a couple huge homers off Dallas Allen last year after Dallas had that huge scoreless inning streak going and Jonah just turned up in the World Series. 
is he hit great in that and he really complimented Jimmy as like I'm saying for what I think their weakness could be. I do think Jonah can do it, but I want to see him do it this year. I'm worried a little bit about their lineup going into this season. I do think their pitching will be better though. That's why I have their pitching above the Cubs, Magic, and Gators. I have a lot of depth there with Trey Flood, who I think Trey will be their go-to number two arm. They also have Casey, and Casey can definitely get the job done as he has great movement. Just as good, if not better, than Trey, probably. In the fourth spot, I'm going to have my Western Wildcats. A lot of MLW fans have us lower right now, and I do see why, but I'm going to tell you guys why I do think we are going to be one of the best teams in the league this year. I think in general, our team puts in some of the most work in MLW. We are one of the most dedicated teams and one of the teams with the best overall chemistry, which I think is going to be huge for us going into this year. From an outside point of view, everybody's saying that our, the secondary pitching is going to be our biggest problem this year, and that is where I disagree. Nick Saylor has been working all offseason, and he has developed a couple new pitches. Saylor literally led the league in ERA two years ago, and he's still one of the best pitchers overall in the league last year, even though he did end up getting hit around more. Nick Saylor, though, is one of the biggest dogs I know in the league. If you guys need to go get a win, you need to go get a big hit. I'm picking Nick up every single time. I also think that me just putting in work myself is going to be huge for this team this year. And I really do think that I can be a number two arm in this league if I just continue to keep proving myself. I think that I can do it and our team can do it. Because all the fans know that we do have probably one of the best lineups, if not the best lineup in MLW from an outside point of view. And really, we're hungrier than ever. We want to win more than ever. And we've said that the past couple of years, but now we have that underdog mentality and we're just going to keep it on our shoulders. And therefore, I think that with our offense that we have and our improved pitch, Pitching, I think that we are really going to be one of the best teams and I'm very excited to see how this season plays out and just to see how it goes. Next up I have the Eastern Eagles led by Dallas Allen. Dallas was easily one of the best pitchers in the league last year hands down and this team easily has the most depth in MLW. Their offense has a lot of guys who put the bat on the ball. They don't have a ton of power on that team and I think that their pitching is still going to be just there. They have made it to the postseason the past couple years. They've just been coming up short. This year could be different for them if all the pieces come together though. And I think that they're easily going to be one of the best teams in the league because they probably have the best pitching tandem in the league with Dan Schultz and Dow. And I think that Dallas being young is only going to continue to improve more. And I just can't wait to see it. As he's one of my best friends in the league. I know how dedicated he is. I know how committed he is. And I just can't wait to see him and his team keep improving because they have a bunch of dogs on that team. This one kind of hurts the heart to say, guys. This one hurts the heart a little bit. I can't lie. I got to put the Preds at two. Led by Ryan Cratch, obviously, who was the MVP last year. This team is pretty well-rounded. They had B. Russ hit really well last year. They have Ryan, who hits extremely well, pitches extremely well. They have Warda, who's a veteran who can easily get the job done. He did have a little bit of a down year last year, but he is a great hitter, and he had a couple of huge homers against us in the postseason. Ryan is the hardest pitcher I have ever had to face in the box as he's just disgusting as he has a variety of pitches and you really don't know which one is coming. You can't just look at his arm angle because he has many pitches from multiple arm angles, some from the same. So it really throws you off as a hitter. These guys are just simply one of the best teams. And for number one, as you guys can probably expect, I think the Mallards are going to be the team to beat this year. I'm saying this is pretty simple. They have Jordan Robles, obviously a great player, one of the best players in the league. He's going to lead them pitching and hitting. They're going to be complimented by Tommy Caden, who I think is going to be a great pitcher this year. And my boy, Preston Cole. And Jordan last year, from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, improved on the mound tremendously. It was ridiculous what he was able to do. He's going to be able to improve even more this season. But I do think that they are going to be the team that everybody looks up to as like the top dog. So it's going to be very exciting to see what they can do this season. Make sure you guys subscribe. I'm coming with new videos every single week, and I'm going to be trying to make more and more MLW videos as that's what I know you guys like the most. Stay tuned. I love you guys. Like, subscribe. Peace out. I'll see you guys next week. I love YouTube.